Let's get one thing straight. Summer isn't guaranteed. Yeah, you heard that right. While some of us complain about the heat and dream of central air conditioning, there are places on Earth that literally never get a summer. No flip-flops, no pool parties, no sweating through your clothes on public transportation, just cold forever. But why? What is it about certain places that make them immune to summer's charms? To answer that, we need to dive into the mechanics of Earth's orbit tilt and a few geographical quirks that make some regions the planet's official no-fun zones. Let's start with the big one. Earth is tilted on its axis about 23.5 degrees. That might sound random, but it's the reason we have seasons in the first place. When one hemisphere tilts toward the sun, it basks in sunlight for longer parts of the day. That's summer. Meanwhile, the other hemisphere tilts away gets shorter days and weaker sunlight. That's winter. Six months later, they swap. This tilt means that regions near the equator get consistent sunlight all year. Hello, eternal summer. While the poles swing between all-day sunshine and all-day darkness. But here's the thing, tilt doesn't work Ooh. alone. Latitude is your position north or south of the equator. It's the celestial equivalent of your zip code. The further you are from the equator, the more extreme your seasons become. But at the very ends of the Earth above the Arctic Circle or below the Antarctic Circle, it gets weird. These places experience polar day and polar night. For part of the year, the sun doesn't set. For the other part, it doesn't rise. You'd think that when the sun finally returns, it'd be time for margaritas and beach towels right wrong. Even during the endless daylight, these regions don't warm up much. Why? Because even though they're getting sunlight, it hits at a low angle. That means the energy is spread out over a larger area. It's like trying to toast bread with a flashlight. Technically light, but not exactly toasty. Add to that a reflective surface snow and ice bounce, most of that light away, and you've got a recipe for year-round chill. Let's talk about the biggest no-summer zone of all Antarctica. This continent is so cold, dry, and high in elevation that it basically flips the bird to traditional seasons. Even in its warmest months, December to February, it averages temperatures around minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit inland. And that that's considered summer. You could microwave your socks, and they'd still freeze on your feet. Why so cold latitude? It's at the bottom of the Earth, literally. Elevation. The Antarctic Plateau sits over 9,000 feet above sea level. That's like living permanently on a Himalayan mountaintop. Albedo snow and ice reflect most sunlight. Isolation. The Antarctic circumpolar current traps cold water around the continent acting like a thermal moat. Result no summer, just different shades of winter. And unlike the Arctic, which is mostly ocean covered with ice, Antarctica is a whole continent rock solid and high up. That elevation really matters. For every 1,000 feet you go up, you lose about 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Multiply that by 9 and well, welcome to your frozen nightmare. Geological data show that Antarctica wasn't always this cold. Fossils and sediment records indicate that 50 million years ago this icy wasteland had trees and reptiles, but continental drift pushed it to its current location where the sun barely works and snow never leaves. Recent satellite observations also show how drastically the ice shelves have been melting in the past few decades. What once was a fortress of cold permanence is slowly showing cracks both literal and climatic. The Arctic is a little more lenient than its southern sibling. In places like northern Alaska or Siberia, you might get above freezing temperatures for a few weeks, maybe. But it's not a beach vacation. Even during 24-hour daylight, it's windy, chilly, and prone to sudden snow flurries. You could be sunburned and frostbitten at the same time. It's chaos. The Arctic Ocean, unlike Antarctica's ice-covered landmass, is water, and water holds heat better than ice or rock. So it helps buffer temperature swings a bit, but not enough to make it summer in any traditional sense. And remember that ocean acts like a thermostat. It takes longer to heat up and cool down. So even when the sun's out for months, the ocean's chill keeps the air. Not toasty. Scientists use long-term climate reconstructions in this region by studying ice cores from Greenland. These reveal not only how temperatures have changed over millennia, but also how atmospheric gases like CO2 were involved. It's basically a climate time machine. You don't have to go to the poles to find summerless spots. High-altitude locations even near the equator can have permanent permanently cold climates. Take Mount Everest. It's at 29,000 feet. Above a certain point, the air's too thin to hold warmth. So, even in June or July, temperatures at the summit can hover around minus 40 degrees. Then, there's the Andes, the Alps, and the Rockies. Certain alpine zones never see summer-like warmth. Snow can linger all year. Glaciers don't melt. Locals grow vegetables with a prayer and a down jacket. Even in tropical countries like Peru or Kenya, mountain peaks like Huascaran or Mount Kenya have permanent ice. So yes, you can literally be at the equator and still get 
get frostbite. Climatologists studying these regions track glacial retreat over time using satellite imaging. Changes in these ice fields are considered one of the most visible signs of global warming. Also, wildlife in these regions has evolved unique ways to deal with the lack of warm seasons. Certain alpine insects can enter a form of cryostasis, and mountain goats grow double-layered coats to trap body heat in ways no designer jacket ever could. In many no-summer places, the warmest season isn't hot, it's just less cold. Instead of summer meaning t-shirts and popsicles, it means the air hurts your face slightly less. Rivers might thaw. Animals emerge. You can see the ground. It's the polar version of a party. Some Arctic towns host summer festivals in 40-degree weather. People wear shorts out of principle, not comfort. There might be a single flower. It's adorable. Kids still play outside. Ice cream trucks still exist. And somewhere, someone is BBQing over a glacier. There's also a surprising boom in tourism during this summer-ish window. Cruises along the Arctic Circle, mountaineering expeditions in Greenland, and research stations opening their doors to a few adventurous interns. So will these places ever get a real summer? Here's where climate change enters the chat. The poles are warming faster than the rest of the planet. Arctic sea ice is retreating. Some permafrost is melting. Summers are becoming summerish. These ecosystems evolved to survive cold. If you melt the ice, you lose the reflectivity, which means more sunlight gets absorbed, which means even more warming. It's a feedback loop, like opening your fridge to cool the house. Plus species like polar bears, penguins, and reindeer depend on cold seasons. No summer wasn't just a quirk, it was survival. Permafrost melting also releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. So ironically, warming up these no summer zones can supercharge global warming for everyone else. Whole communities that rely on frozen ground for infrastructure are seeing roads buckle, buildings sink, and ancient viruses thawing from the ice. Yes, that's a thing. Now contrast that with, say, the Amazon rainforest. Constant sun, constant humidity, and temperatures hovering in the 80s or 90s year-round. In tropical climates, seasons are defined not by temperature but by rainfall. It's either wet or wetter. The idea of summer there is meaningless because it never stops being hot. So while some people are sweating through three shirts a day, others are trying to thaw their toothpaste indoors. Meanwhile, in places like Singapore or Jakarta, people might look confused if you ask what season it is. Their calendar is more like rain again or surprise still raining. Despite these extremes, people still live in some of these no-summer regions. In Barrow, Alaska, now called Utkyagvik, residents go months without seeing the sun, then months where it never sets. Their bodies and minds adapt to rhythms that defy most calendars. People develop seasonal routines based not on temperature but on light. Hunting and fishing cycles adjust to ice conditions. Homes are built to trap warmth. Life goes on even without a proper summer. And perhaps that's the most fascinating part, our ability to redefine what a season means. Where there's no summer, humans make their own out of tradition, out of resilience, and maybe a little stubbornness. There's even fashion built for it. Some indigenous Arctic communities use layers of fur skin and breathable materials in a way modern tech hasn't been able to top. Warmth style and cultural pride wrapped in a parka. Let's end on a weird note. If some places never get summer but people still find joy hold festivals and adapt to the chill, what is summer really? Maybe it's not a temperature range. Maybe it's that feeling of change. Light returning, the earth waking up, a new phase however brief. In that case, even the iciest places get their version of summer. You just have to squint a little. And wear gloves. So the next time you complain about a heat wave, remember somewhere out there it's summer and still snowing. And someone is barbecuing in a parka because that's just how it goes when your whole country said not nah to the sun.